Welcome to Finance and Focus. I'm really, really blessed today. I'm really, really excited today because I've got a guest with me. This guest is going to be with me for the next few weeks and we are going to speak about what God's doing, what God's saying within the area of finance and the church. And I'm so blessed today. But just before we start and before I introduce my guest, I just want to thank everyone who's been calling me, who's been emailing me regarding the last series when I was teaching on ignorance is not bliss. Remember, ignorance is not a lack of intelligence, but it is a lack of knowledge. So if you're watching this morning, this whole teaching series and everything to do with this program is about bringing a balance to the prosperity message. And I believe that God's bringing a prophetic mandate and a prophetic voice to the church at large to start learning some stuff and getting some education and getting some wisdom and knowledge. Remember the scripture says in Hosea 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. <clears throat> and you know what? Sometimes I feel very alone. Sometimes I feel as though I'm swimming upstream when I look at some of the programs out there and how some preachers are preaching regarding prosperity. And I know that I've heard from God and I know that God is bringing balance to this whole subject. There's over 2,350 scriptures on finance and it's not just about giving it's not just about seed time harvest god wants us to have knowledge and wisdom and understanding the bible says in proverbs 8 enduring wealth comes through wisdom remember enduring wealth it's so easy to obtain but so much harder to maintain so God is bringing education, he's bringing teaching, and I'm so glad to be able to do that, and I'm so excited about my guest here today, and I want to introduce him to you. Many of you will probably know him. He's had so many programs on Revelation TV and Genesis, and it's Dr. Roy Hafford. Roy, welcome to Finance and Focus. Thank you, sir. It's good to be home. Yes, you're I just arrived uh, just a few hours ago into the airport, travel all night, but it's good to be here. And thank you for what you're doing. I mean, unfortunately, some of the people we're talking about are my friends. Really, Roy? You oh, know, yes. Well, you'll know a lot of these well, guys. Well, of course for I do. Many, many years. But, but the problem is not just finances. Yes. Everything that, that God has revealed to the church, man has taken it, yes. abused it, and gone to extreme. Take, mm. uh, I, I, I'm old enough to remember the, the latter rain in the, in, the early, in the early 50s and the 40s. Yes. Well, what happened? That went to extreme and. People were giving languages for missionaries. You don't need to learn the language. You know, that isn't what God had in mind at all. Mm -hmm. And then we had the revelation that we have authority yes. over demons with deliverance. So what happens? Man gets a hold of it, to goes extreme. to extreme Absolutely. until demons behind every pew, behind every <laughs> bush, under every pew, everything's a problem. Yes. A demon. Yes. No. Then the, then the pendulum goes to the other extreme. Yep. No demon can cross the bloodline. True. Yeah. But the bloodline applies only to my born-again spirit. That's right. The mind, the mind can be flesh. tormented, the emotions, yeah. the will, the body, the bank account. So thank you for the emphasis you're giving on the balance of Bible. Yes, I believe in prosperity. Yes, ab Yes, absolutely. I believe in, in sowing and reaping. Yes. But as I said to you before the program, mm -hmm. in Acts, 28, Acts 8, verse 22, it says seed time and harvest. Genesis 8. Genesis 8, yes. that's right. Genesis yes. 8, 22. Yes. Seed time and harvest. My translation is seed time. <laughs> And yeah. harvest. That's right. We forget that you don't get the harvest as soon as you plant the seed. Mm -hmm. It takes time. Mm -hmm. And yes, sowing and reaping is in Second Corinthians chapter nine, okay, verse eight. Mm -hmm. But uh, but the extreme position is wrong and is doing discredit to the body of Christ. Roy, we love the American brothers. We thank God for the Word of Faith movement. We thank God for so many anointed brothers and sisters that have came to this country with a message that's challenged the UK. But you know what? For, for some time now, I feel quite, you don't mind me saying this, I, I get quite irritated when I, 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 I hear 
the way that the American prosperity gospel, I'm not saying the Lord will say him, because there's good ministries out there sure. that come to this country and they're still abusing God's people. It is a form right. of abuse. And when God first spoke to me about bringing this balance to prosperity, wonderful. the first thing I said, I really didn't want to do it because I didn't want to start swimming upstream. I didn't want to be a heresy hunter, God forbid. <laughs> no. You know, I'm, I'm trying to just deal with my own life. You're and a trying. truth promoter. Truth. Uh, Not a heresy hunter, but a truth promoter. Absolutely. Or a truth teller. Well, the Bible says, speak the truth in love. That's right. Love and truth are twins. That's and right. if we love each other, we need to be able to speak the truth. And, and this is a... It's on. interesting, Terry, that mm. when the Apostle Paul wrote to Corinth about love, he takes 13 verses in 1 Corinthians 13. Yes. 13 verses to talk about love. But in 2 Corinthians chapters 8 and 9, talking about giving... Sowing, yes. reaping, absolutely. Thirty-nine verses, yeah. three times more yeah. to talk about money yeah. than to talk about love. Because it's so important. Absolutely, and it's so important. God has got a lot to say about money in the area of finances. But as you know, every time God speaks, the devil speaks. That's right. And he twists, he doubts, he distorts, and he denies the word like of that. God. He continually twists the word of God. He did it to Jesus in the wilderness. That's right. But. What I'm trying to teach the people that, you know, we the ignorance is not bliss, That's right. that we need to know what the Word of God says. Amen. We need to bring a balance. Yes, the Word says that God delights in the prosperity of his servants, yes. Yes. but the same Word also says that prosperity ruins the fool. Now, yes. as I said earlier on, we love our, our American brothers, but please tell me, you know, you were born in the UK, but you've lived most of your time in America. Tell me, are you sensing the prophetic mandate that what God is doing with this whole financial teaching? And tell me how you're feeling about the whole yes, thing. Yes, that and much more, Terry. Mm -hmm. I I actually have three citizenship. <laughs> I am still British. Okay. Still have a British passport. Number two, I'm American. Mm -hmm. I've traveled the world, but my priority is I'm a citizen of, of the, the kingdom. kingdom of God. Come on. Amen. So that's my that's my priority. Yeah. But it's interesting in Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse eighteen, mm -hmm. God gives you power to get wealth. Mm -hmm. So if it's a sin to have it, mm -hmm. God's confused. Exactly. But the purpose, God gives you power to get wealth to establish the covenant mm -hmm. He promised to our fathers. Now, what did he say to Abraham? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it to you. Give you it away. Uh, yep, absolutely. I'm going to bless you. Bless the world. Mm -hmm. Now, you've done wedding ceremonies, and mm -hmm. I have too, you know, mm -hmm. to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer. For, that's fine for the wedding vow, mm -hmm. but that's not the idea to have when you have money, to have and to hold. No, God wants you to have it but not hold it, mm -hmm. to have it and bless, mm -hmm. give and extend the kingdom of God and build the church. So it's blessed to be a blessing. That's right. So what we have though, Roy, this is this is the thing that I have. I, I totally agree with that. The scripture is clear, the Abrahamic blessing. That's right. But you know, I was doing a whole series of teaching called Money God's Way or the Devil's Way. And during that time, the Lord really spoke to me about the Abrahamic blessing. Yes. Galatians 3.29, if you belong to Christ, you're Abraham's seed. That's right. And heirs according to the blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. That's right. But, you know, God showed me so much about Jacob. Jacob was the opposite of his grandfather, Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham sought God first mm -hmm. and money and wealth came. Jacob sought money and wealth came, money and wealth, and God came. Because yeah. God turned up and wrestled him <laughs> to the ground. That's and right. God was showing me that the principles that Abraham learned, that consecration unto God, his nephew, his, his, sorry, his grandson Jacob, wanted the quick fix. He was a manipulator, deceiver, he was a cheat. He wanted the prosperity, but he wanted to steal it. He wanted right. to steal the birthright. He wanted to steal the blessing. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is the kind of prosperity we have in the church today. Just exactly what you said. We have the Abrahamic, blessed to be a blessing, givers, big hearts. But that Jacob type of prosperity oh, yeah. has come yeah. in, looking for the quick fix, That's manipulating right. the scriptures. And we know that the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you, seed, time, and harvest. 
But Jacob tried to do exactly the same thing right. and God turned up. God right. was on his case. So although the word of God does speak a lot about giving, my concern is when we turn on the TV evangelist oh. and he's <laughs> he's using these same scriptures, Roy. That's right to raise millions and millions of pounds to tell people if they give, God's going to bless them. And it is, I have to say this, it's almost like selling indulgences pre-Reformation. That's right. And that's what's come into the church. Tell me, what, what do you, you think? You see, money in itself, Terry, and I'm yeah. preaching to a choir now, money in itself is neither good nor bad. bad. That's right. It's how you use it or abuse it. Yes. One verse in every five in the New Testament deals with money, possessions, yes. giving. Jesus taught more about giving and possessions than prayer. Yes, he did. So it is not that money is the problem. The root of the, the love of money is, is the, the root. root of all evil. Yes. And the fact is you can love money when you don't have money to love. So it's not the money per se. It's like water. Mm -hmm. Water can destroy life. Water can save life. Absolutely. W money can build hospitals. That's good. That's right. Money can build weapons of mass destruction. That's, That's bad. Right. It's how you use it. Yes. And again, speaking of uh, Galatians 3, mm -hmm. some Christians don't seem to understand that here is the promise, but we have to move from the promise to the possession. Yes. For instance, God said to Joshua, I have, past tense, given you the land. That's right. He didn't have it. Mm -hmm. He had to fight. That's good. And possess. Mm -hmm. Chapter 6 of Joshua, I have, past tense, That's good. delivered Jericho into your hand. Mm -hmm. He didn't have it by promise. So when the Bible says Christ had delivered us from the curse of the law, the blessings of Abraham, that's mm -hmm. the promise. That's right. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen Exactly. Automatically, we have to apply faith, have the right motive, be willing to give as God gives, to share as God shares, and the motive has got to be right. Absolutely. Well, First Corinthians thirteen three says, "If I give all my money to the poor, right. but have not love, that's right. what does it mean? That's it right. means nothing." That's right. And my concern is today that the more and more that we address this subject, and I keep saying to people, teaching comes by way of repetition. That's right. If God is bringing a prophetic word, it's going to keep coming and coming and coming till we do something about it. And more and more, people are starting to understand the need for education, yep. the need for wisdom, yep. the need for understanding, the need to, to understand exactly what the Word of God says, yep. not just you know biblically from a, from a spiritual point of view, but a practical point of view. Yep. When you uh, mentioned earlier on about seed, Time, <laughs> harvest, yeah. well, the devil's come in and stole time out of that That's scripture. Right. And That's it's right. become seed harvest. Now, mm -hmm. I know, Roy, that there's so many people watching this. And there's so many people caught up in this and they're watching. And, and, and as I have to say, as the American TV evangelist, Roy, they're on our programs. They're on those almost 13 Christian channels. Yeah. And they're telling people, sow the seed, go to the phone, and you're going to get a hundredfold anointing. You know, Terry. Well, tell me, Roy. <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend this, but all it's going to take is somebody who hears that, give a thousand today, get a thousand next week, sue them. Sue them. That'll stop them. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? Yeah. If you make a promise, a guarantee that you give to God today and God will give you a thousand in return tomorrow, if it doesn't happen, why not sue them? Absolutely. But that will absolutely change their course. Yeah, you know. Well, but again, you mentioned love. Yeah. In in Second Corinthians eight and nine, when Paul talks about giving and and sowing and reaping, he mentions the word love. In Second Corinthians seven and eight, so you can you can give without loving. You cannot love mm -hmm. without giving, mm -hmm. and the word grace is mentioned seven times, which is God's number. Seven times in 2 Corinthians 7 and 8, the grace of giving. Mm -hmm. God wants us to have all grace, that it may abound. Mm -hmm. So it's not give and you'll get, sow and you'll get harvest. Yes, the harvest will come, as long as the motivation is right. And that has to be faith, which works by love. This is 5, 6. That's right. But what my concern is, it has become a quick fix. It is appealing to people's greed. 
Oh, that's right. And uh, as appealing to people, go to the phone and God's get 10 people out there or 100 <laughs> people out there. It's sad. Going to I'm laughing, but, but it's sad. It is very sad. But I, I feel the pain of it, Roy. Yeah. I feel the pain of the abuse. I've been to so many conferences and I've heard this. I mean, I call them slick Sam, the prosperity man. Sure. They're slick, they're orators. Oh, yeah. And they look good, they sound good. They and do you know, t Terry, some <laughs> of them are con men. Some of the guys that I yeah. see on TV, I know them. Wow. They've been to prison. Really? Not one or two. I could name several that are popular on television. Today, on television? Oh, yes. On Christian television. And they're out of prison doing the same thing again. Yeah. So uh, you don't believe everything you see on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and you know personally that's the oh, case. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I could name them, of course, I won't. See, see that's what I think. The charismatic Pentecostal church needs a brain. I've said that so many times. It's almost like the world would not stand for this. That's right. The world would say, get this guy out of That's here. Right. Why are we putting a camera on his face? Why are we giving him a studio? Well, Why know, are we giving him this? It was the world that exposed them in the first place. Yes. It was these hidden cameras by ABC and some of the networks in, in, in America that exposed them and got them into prison. So tell us about that. What so, happened? Well, they were doing what you talk about and abusing money and not doing what they said they would do. And so they sent hidden cameras oh. into their ministry, exposed them, and they finished up in prison. But unfortunately, they let out, <laughs> do the <laughs> same thing again. And yet Christians take them back in, yeah. we embrace them, and then the abuse you know, all over I, again. I, again, people are going to know who I'm talking about, but... Then there's the other side. If you send me a thousand dollars, I'll send you a prophecy. My response is go to the psychic. <laughs> the Holy Spirit uses us. Yes. We use the psychic spirit. Oh. Let me get the difference. The Holy Spirit uses us yep. in his sovereign will and wisdom. But when somebody says, you send me money and I will send you a prophetic word, they are using the wrong spirit. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit is, does not pray that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What about the scripture? I mean, the, the, the scripture says, fear not, little flock. It's the Father's Father. good pleasure to give you the kingdom, to give you the kingdom, right. not sell you the kingdom, That's right. but to give you the kingdom. That's right. So these guys that are selling the kingdom, and these guys are still on television today, who have been in prison, and, and they're on television, and they're buying airtime, and they're still abusing God's people. Do you know, how, I just find that so ridiculous that we actually allow this to happen. Yeah, and, and you know, there are so, I don't know of any other program either here or in America, where the balance of this truth is being prepared. Really? Yeah. There must you're, be another You're the only one. <laughs> and I salute you because this is something necessary. Yes. That's it's very right. difficult at times, Roy, because for years and years and years, people have had this prosperity message. And, and as you said earlier on, I'm all for prosperity. I mean, people may get me wrong and think I'm into a poverty gospel. No, 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 no. no, no. You have to I'm believe the Bible to believe it. Uh, absolutely, you've got to. Beloved, I wish above all things that you, you prosper, prosper, be in health, health your soul prosper. prospers. Yeah. It's there. Absolutely. But what my concern is that God wants us to abund of the abundance. God wants millionaires. God wants entrepreneurs. In fact, you're here for our financial champion seminar right. this year, this weekend in London, That's where right. we're going to mentor 20 people, business people, entrepreneurs. We're going to teach them what the Word of God says. So God's into creating wealth. But my concern is that we need to keep bringing this message. And I thank you, Roy. I really do appreciate it. I know you're well known all over the world. You're a man who's just, you're, you're double my age. And I'm just, <laughs> I just honor you. I uh, respect you. I just you. look that way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being my guest. But it's good because you do come with this experience. You're a seasoned man of God. Thank and you. for you to say these things, I know that the Revelation Genesis, Genesis audience will be watching this program. And to hear Dr. Roy Hawthorne say these things and, and, and endorse what I'm saying, I tell you, it's good for me as well. It Absolutely. encourages me. You are really to, to be commended mm -hmm. for doing it. You see, I had my 22nd birthday 
going over to the States on the Queen Mary. Right. For 22 years, I sat under the best and the brightest because all the teachers in Pentecost were Englishmen. Yes, that's they right. They were the ones that Smith wrote Wigglesworth the gifts. And, and Howard Carter, Donald G., Harold Horton, and others. And yet I never heard one message on tithes, offerings, giving, wow. sowing. Well, I had to go to America wow. to hear it. That's so amazing. I thank God you and what you're doing. Keep it up. <laughs> Bless you. Amen. So tell us a bit about your history. So you were born in Stoke-on-Trent. I was born in Stoke-on-Trent. Mm -hmm. I had my 80th birthday on the plane coming over. Mm -hmm. I decided to see what Abraham might look like. I decided to grow a beard. <laughs> and um, uh, I've had a very... If you just hook that over your ear, Roy, it'll be oh fine. Oh, boy. So you're on the jet, I'm on the bicycle. <laughs> you're still I, just... Uh, Yep. I've had a very full life, very exciting life. My father had an apostolic ministry yes. in Staffordshire. He founded almost 30 churches in Cheshire yeah. and Staffordshire. I met uh, and had, had lunch with uh, Reese Howell, who wrote the book, Classic Intercession. on Intercession. Yeah. Went to the home of Evan Roberts, the great Welsh revivalist. Mm -hmm. I played the piano for Smith Wigglesworth before he passed away. Wow. I've traveled the world with Youngie Cho, preached for Youngie Cho several times. Pauline was the first lady to speak to Youngie Cho's staff. We started Charisma Magazine, started uh, Channel 52 in Orlando, which has now belonged to uh, TBN. We financed Channel 55, which is the largest in the whole state of Florida. So we, had, we built uh, Calvary Towers. 16th story for the high rise. Wow. We started the Jesus festivals, which attracted up to 30,000 in Central Florida. So, been there, done that. God's and your, been church, good. your church was the fastest growing church fastest in the Fastest growing States. church of all denominations in Orlando. We went, went from 200 to over 7,000. Oh, that's amazing. And you yeah. pioneered that, that, yeah. that, that church himself. Yeah. And I believe your daughter's married to. Some pastors, some yeah, people. Yeah, that's one I of my claims his, to fame. Benny what's his name? Brendi, was it Brendi Quinn? <laughs> no, Benny Hinn or something? Is it Bre Benny Hinn? Yeah, oh, you're Benny Hinn. You, yeah. you may have heard of Benny Hinn before. So, so Suzanne's married to Pastor Benny. I tell, I tell people I've got two claims to fame. Number one, I'm son, the father-in-law of Benny Hinn and married to Pauline. <laughs> <laughs> so you have traveled a bit, a bit, you've done it, you've wore the T-shirt, you've been there. Then in 2002, I was taken down with cancer, kidneys destroyed. God came into my room and gave me two brand new kidneys, no transplant, healed me of cancer. The doctor said, what's going on? I'm a, I'm a scientist, a medical doctor. Go home. The Lord came back. He said, no, go overseas to start a church. Yeah. I thought, well... Hawaii or the Caribbean, <laughs> a beautiful island with exotic yes. water and palm trees, Stoke-on-Trent. Mm -hmm. So since 2004, we've been in Stoke-on-Trent pioneering a church. Now we've put in a pastor, June um, Beardmore is the pastor. We're going back on Sunday there to preach there okay. Monday again. And uh, coming back uh, four times a year for conferences, we'll be with you. And we'll also do the finance have, conference, we'll do the champions uh, yeah. conference, we'll We're do the stoke a conference in Ju in January on spiritual warfare, right. which uh, is needed. Yeah. Pauline asked, this is not on finances, but in interesting. Yeah. Before we went to Stoke-on-Trent, Pauline asked the Lord, what strongholds over the city would we face? Mm -hmm. And the Lord told her. Mm -hmm. Here we go again. The Lord told that her. That microphone's possessed. That I microphone's needing some deliverance, <laughs> I think, Dr. Roy. <laughs> the Lord told her that it, there was gossip, false accusation, suspicion, lies. Uh -huh. and uh, But even then, we, we were not prepared for the onslaught. But thank God we've read the last chapter. You can't drive the car looking through the rearview mirror. That's right. You're going on. <laughs> Amen. So you're back home in Florida now. So you're, yep. you're taking up your apostolic ministry. I believe yep. you're busy in Florida. We're You're doing, doing loads and loads since of I've gone back, I've been blessed beyond measure. Talk about sowing and reaping. Because one of the things the Lord said in the hospital, I will restore your finances. Right. Well, well that hadn't happened. Right. So I kept confessing it and doing battle with the devil. But it's happening. Wow. I got a lot, the largest offering of my life. 
a couple of weeks ago. Someone bought me a car last week. Someone bought me a printer last week. I was blessed uh, in Minneapolis with a great, great offering. I mean, things are happening. So you're not retired, you're refired. Refired. Your ministry is only just beginning. It's a sin to get old. It's not a sin to get older. Amen. There's two ages in Christ, young and younger. I like that. Come on. Caleb started his ministry at 80. Yeah. Moses at 80. That's right. Yeah. So I have 40 more years to go yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just starting your ministry. There you go. And you really, really, really look well, Roy. Well, thank you. I'm I like the beard, the beard. I thought Santa Claus it was. <laughs> I'd come into the hotel this morning. <laughs> well, my family teases me that if I ever quit the ministry, I can become Santa Claus. <laughs> in, in America, it's not Santa Claus. It's Father, no, it's Father Christmas over here. Father Santa Christmas Claus. in England. Yeah, Santa not Claus. Not Father Christmas in Scotland. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Santa Claus. You know, let me say about the Scottish folks. I've yes. preached in Scotland many times. Mm -hmm. The Scottish people have, have had a bad rap. They have. The, the, the most generous, kind, yes. loving people I have ever met in my ministry have been the Scottish people. Amen. Yeah, they, they have. It is, it's a bad reputation. It's wrong. I know. It because is we're wrong. very given, very, yeah. very generous yeah, I people. I found that. The Scottish people. And we're warriors as well, though. Yes, like, indeed. Don't mess with the Scots. Amen. <laughs> the, Romans was, the, the Romans couldn't conquer the Sco Scotland. Yeah. Because we chased them back out and told That's them right. to get on their bike. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Finance and Focus. I hope you're blessed today. This is part two of my interview with Dr. Roy Hathen. I hope you watched the program last week. We covered a lot of stuff regarding the prosperity message, and we're going to continue this today. We're going to continue discussing this today. Listen, record this program. This is a program that you want to be sharing with people who you, you know that are caught up in this thing. We want to bring a balance to the teaching on finance. And we have Dr. Roy here this morning with me just to talk this whole thing through. Roy, welcome back to part two. Thank you. Of the Roy and Terry show. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> we could do this on a regular basis. Of course. So last week we were talking, Roy, about the whole prosperity gospel and yeah. how it's been distorted and how it's been twisted. Yeah. And as much as it was such a blessing, we yeah. needed to hear yeah. that God wants to prosper us because yeah. prior to that, we had a poverty mentality. I mean, I was brought up as a Roman Catholic, yeah. so we had the kind of Franciscan spirituality. Yeah. And the vow of poverty is not scriptural anyway. It's not scriptural at all. As, yeah, prosperity is scriptural, but not the abuse. And you're to be commended for bringing the balance because everything I said in the last program, everything that God has revealed to man, man has taken and gone to extremes. Mm -hmm. An extreme is error. The theme of the Bible is balance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The theme of the Bible, no matter what it is, whether it's faith or the word or discipleship or shepherding or you name it, mm -hmm. we've had extremes in all of these revelations, but the theme of the Bible is balance. So all truth begins, all error begins with a truth. That's right. That's been taken to extreme. That's right. And of course, as we said the last time, it's the enemy that comes in behind because he's a scholar. That's right. He oh, knows he the knows word of God. He knows more than we do. He's got the audacity <laughs> to twist the word of God to Jesus That's right. in the wilderness. That's right. And Jesus had to say to him, it is also written. And this is what we are going to be saying today. We, we want to be able to say to a lot of the doctrines that are out there, a lot of the messages that are out there regarding finance and prosperity, it is also written. It is also written exactly the same as Jesus did with Satan. Jesus could have said anything to Satan, right. but he quotes the word of God That's to right. deal with him. So I want to be able to just keep you know, talking about this and debating this whole subject, Roy, because I know you're a seasoned man, you've traveled the world, you've heard all the messages, and as you said, some of these guys were your personal friends. And still are. And still I, are. You know, I say that uh, with tongue in cheek, yeah. because uh, some of them have been to prison, and some of the uh, network, television networks in America, have sent secret cameras into their ministry to expose them, and uh, they've been exposed and been to prison. Thank Unfortunately, you, they haven't learned their lesson. They come out of prison and, and start up again. Do the same thing again. And what do we do? We open the doors and let them in. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. Do you know, I heard a story 
of one who's actually on just now, but he actually had an earpiece. Oh, that's right. In I his can ear. name him. I won't. No, I won't. <laughs> he had an earpiece in yeah. his ear. And what I heard was that his wife was his actually... His wife in the office, yeah. She was doing the registration yeah. and finding out if people Absolutely. had a sore back. Or, yeah. You know, and then she was naming them in the third row. And he was the one, one of the ones who went to prison. He's out doing the same thing Thanks. again. Can you believe it? And yet Jesus warns of, about ferocious wolves coming in among us. The Apostle Paul tells us about yeah. ferocious wolves you know, coming in among the, us. The, the most difficult thing to deal with is deception. How do you know you're deceived if you're deceived? That is good, Roy. That is very good. How do you good. know you're deceived if you're deceived? And, yeah. and many of these guys and gals, I'm sure, are, are sincere, mm -hmm. but they're sincerely wrong. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago, Terry, I was going to candidate, that's the way they did it back then, mm -hmm. uh, church in Jacksonville, and I put some toothpaste in my case it wasn't toothpaste, it was Brill Cream, you know? <laughs> yeah. It looked like Colgate. Yep. Have you ever cleaned your teeth with Brill Cream? It's not <laughs> the most pleasant experience. I was sincere, but, but sincerely, sincerely wrong. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of these people in their preaching and teaching of prosperity, mm -hmm. the, the, they've taken a truth, but again, they're deceived because they don't have the balance. Mm -hmm. They don't have the balance. Do you know, I was in a church uh, a few months ago, and I heard the pastor speaking on tithing. and But the way that he spoke about tithing, I've got a whole series of teaching called tithing is not a money issue, it's a love issue. That's right. And actual fact, it's got nothing to do with money. How can you give God money? Right. I mean, he owns everything. He, he owns the cattle in a thousand hills. Right. All the silver and gold belongs to him. But when I studied Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, most people start with verse 8 saying, will a man rob God? But verse 6 actually says, return to return, me and right. I will return to you. And it's about relationship. And I think it's verse 18 talks about being deceived. Yeah. Tithing has many more benefits Absolutely. than rebuking the devourer. Go ahead. Yeah. So it's about relationship. That, right. that I looked at Malachi from Come a whole on. different perspective. That tithing is a principle, a timeless principle. And whether people believe in tithing or giving generously or 20% or 30%. If we were really to get biblical though, Roy, if we were really to get biblical in the tithing, I reckon you're probably talking between 25 Absolutely. to 30 percent. There's three tithes. There were three tithes in the Old Testament. See, I believe, Terry, that tithing began in Eden. Yes, the tree. Beca because uh -huh. there are so many common denominators, time, days, nights, weeks, blood sacrifice. It may be distorted. You may have to bring the blood of a chicken but blood sacrifice, yes. concept of God, back, yep. priesthood, temples, family. Yes. Now, there may be a plurality of wives, but the concept is there, plus tithing in the most primitive pagan That's right. civilizations. Mm -hmm. They tithe. Yeah. See, the question is in, in Genesis 14, With the Abraham. Bible says Abraham tithed. Who taught him? Mm -hmm. Where did he get that from? There's nothing in the Bible that God revealed to him to tithe it was passed down from generation to generation, yeah. from Eden all the way down. So Abraham had, had no problem. Now, the, then Moses in the law, he said, okay, we're going to amplify this. We've got two tithes. Right. One tithe is for the priesthood. Second tithe is to pay for the feasts of Pentecost, Passover, and Tabernacles. And every third year, a third tithe That's for right. the underprivileged, the, the widows mm -hmm. and the orphans. That's right. That would be like tithes, offerings, and missions, alms yeah. in the New, New Testament. Yeah. So it's, a, it's an exciting principle. I mean, how can you put God first in your finances and not do the basics? Well, too many people want to give God the credit, but they don't <laughs> want to give him the cash. I know what you mean. <laughs> if your heart's you know, in the kingdom, your money should be in the kingdom. I totally you know, believe I've that. I've used this illustration. Of course, I was born over here. And in my day at birth, it was God save the queen, then it became God, God save the, qu the queen, God save the king, then God save the queen. But the power in this nation is not in Buckingham Palace. It's in 10 Downing Street. Street. Yes, of and course. A lot of Christians say, I want Jesus to be my king as long as I can live in 10 Downing Street, mm, as long good. as I can be the prime minister and yes. make all the decisions. No, mm. it doesn't work that way. Mm. Jesus Christ is king and Lord. Lord. And master. And that means he's lord of your finances. That's right. 
So I mean, you see, uh, yeah. get, I'm Come sorry, on, it's your program. Go for it. Come on, see, no. there are three. There are three bases of of finances. You've got communism, where the state owns wealth. You've That's got good. capitalism, mm -hmm. where free enterprise yes. and individuals. You don't own. need God. <laughs> but then you've got Christianity, where God owns everything. That's right. We are stewards. Stewardship. And mm -hmm. stewards must be faithful, accountable, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and that means that my time, my money, everything I have, all I am, is not mine. Mm -hmm. It belongs to God. And if the Christian mentality would get there, see, we tithe, I say, we tithe by reason, 10%. Now, in my day, Terry, can you figure paying tithes on pounds, shillings, and pence? <laughs> 20 shillings make a pound. Pounds, that's right. Eight florins make a pound, four half crowns make a pound, two sixpences make a shilling, mm -hmm. four threepenny pieces make a... I mean, how can you figure... T now it's easy, just move the decimal That's point one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there it is. But you tithe by reason, you give by revelation. There have been, Tell me that. Explain that you more You tithe by reason. Yeah. Ten percent. Yeah. But your giving is by revelation of the Holy Spirit. Amen, that's good. There have been times that, that Paul and I have given more, much more than our tithe, mm -hmm. by revelation. Mm -hmm. So we, we tithe by reason, we give by revelation. It is a timeless principle, but I know there's people watching there, Roy, that would come at it to, from the angle that they would say, according to Second Corinthians, when Paul speaks in Second Corinthians, he talks more about grace given rather than the tithe, rather because they can see the tithing being legalistic. In a lot of ways, I understand it that. It can be joyless, Anything mechanical. Anything can be legalistic. Absolutely, a joyless, Rest, mechanical habits. giving. Uh, yeah. But the same church, when Paul wrote to Corinthians in chapter 9, 1 Corinthians, he said, and I'm, I'm putting it in context, Roy's version, the way the priests were paid in the Old Testament is the pay is the way that ministers will be paid in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. We don't have temples like they had then. We That's don't right. have Levites like they had then. But the principle of the Old Testament is the same for the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when Jesus comes, according to Exodus 44, or Ezekiel rather, 44, when Jesus establishes his kingdom, there will be a millennium temple That's right. with, with, with Le Levites and priests. Mm -hmm. They were paid by the tithes. Mm -hmm. So I say that, that the tithe is the love tax, just as you pay tax, I love tax. I love it. to the kingdom. So tithe is a love, love tax mm -hmm. you pay to the kingdom and to your king. Mm -hmm. Because tithing is a debt of love you owe, Mm -hmm. And offerings are a seed of love you sow. You sow. Mm -hmm. It's interesting when you mentioned uh, Abraham and Melchizedek, yes. because that was before the law. That's right. It's beyond the law. So a lot of people watching the program saying, oh, no, 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 tithing is just for the law. Right. But that was long before the and law And then, of took course, place. in Hebrews chapter, se seven. chapter 7, you've got, again, the three areas. Melchizedek, Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. That's in Hebrews 7. Then you have the Levites paying tithes to the priest. Then you have the believer. The only difference is Christ, our high priest, receives. Right. doesn't say he takes. Right. So the legalistic concept of tithing and That's giving good. is gone. Jesus receives Jesus. as an act of love and yes. grace. He receives. That's but a different way of putting it, though, Roy. The way you're saying this as an act of love. That's right. That, I, I, I love tax. I, I mean, that is so good. Because there is, I mean, I, I'm, I am concerned with a lot of teaching on the tithe because it was, as I opened up by saying, this pastor was ranting and raving and telling people they're going to be cursed with a curse if they don't tithe and their disobedience. Now, I, I have got a problem with that because yeah. Jesus Christ became a curse. That's right. Jesus rebuked the devourer 2,000 years ago right. on the cross and that kind of teaching becomes so legalistic and under the... The law was, I must, um, I have to, but I believe under the new, it's I want to. That's right. It's that's a privilege rather that's than a command. That's right. And that's a, such a good way of You tithe it. in the Old Testament because you have to, but in the New Testament because you want to. You want to because you love the Lord. And, and it's interesting, Terry. And in the kingdom. You know, different, different uh, 
holiness codes, holiness habits have been influenced by geography. When Pauline left England, mm -hmm. all the women had to wear a hat. Really? You could not go to church without a hat. The last thing her mother said as the train pulled out of the station in London, don't let those American women influence you, always wear a hat. <laughs> when she got to America, she wore a hat. And so a pastor said, Pauline, why do you wear a hat? They think you're proud. But in America, it was a sin to cut your hair. Yes. So in, in England, the women had to wear a hat. In America, you couldn't cut your hair. <laughs> so anything can become legalistic. And, yes. And when Paul wrote to the church in, in Galatia, who hath bewitched you? That's right. That's a spirit. <laughs> So anything can become legalistic. And, yes. And w when Paul wrote to the church in, in Galatia, who hath bewitched you? That's right. That's a spirit. Mm -hmm. Legalism is a spirit. Mm -hmm. Love is of the Holy Spirit. That's good. So yeah. it's, it's, it's legalism versus grace here. That's right. In the whole area of tithing and giving and all the rest That's of it. That's right. So you believe in tithing as a tim timeless principle. Oh, but yes. you, you don't believe in curses if you don't. You don't believe that people are going to be cursed if they don't tithe, do no. you? No. No, I don't believe that. No. Uh, as far as, let me back up. I do believe that in, in Malachi 3 that there is a promise of blessing for the obedient when the motivation is love. And if we don't have that motivation of love for obedience, we cannot claim God's blessing. Yes, I, do I understand believe that. that. Yeah. So explain that again. All right. When, when someone comes to me as a pastor yeah. and says, Pastor, I want you to pray that God will give me a job, my first question is, tell me your relationship with God with your money. If he is not tithing and giving with the right motivation, how can I pr pray blessing when by his own act of disobedience and lack of love, He's taken himself out of the blessing field. Mm -hmm. You see, bl tithing and, uh, and giving, it's tithes and offerings, opens the windows of heaven. God will pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to contain. Mm -hmm. So if we don't do what God tells us to do because not we have to, but because we love to, mm -hmm. then we cannot claim the promise without the condition mm -hmm. because every promise has its own condition. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole different context here again. Once again, you're coming at it from a love issue. That's right. You're coming at this. It a, is. It's a relationship issue That's here. Right. And it must go together. I mean, a, yeah. if a family's together and the father <coughs> heading up that household is not providing for his children and his children who are working are not bringing money into the household, then uh, uh, it's, it's not much of a relationship. You're going That's to share right. a scripture with us, Roy. Yeah, two scriptures. Okay. Paul says to the church in Corinth, you are bound in everything. You are bound in faith. That's the power gifts. You abound in speech. That's the vocal gifts. You are bound in knowledge. That's the revelation gift. See that you are bound in this grace giving also. Grace giving, yeah. So in other words, you can speak in tongues and prophesy and have healings and revelation and faith and discerning of spirits. But if you don't abound in love because you love the Lord, Paul says you're lacking. What's the point? Then it says in chapter 9, Let each one of you give as he purposes in his, his heart, heart, not grudgingly. God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, God is able to make all grace. What a verse of superlatives. Mm -hmm. A number of alls and everys and abound. Yes. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work, speaking of giving. <laughs> so it's grace. So it's completely grace. That's right. It's nothing to do with law that's or right. legalism whatsoever. That's right. And that's my concern because a lot of people, because of the way it's been taught. I keep saying time and time again, 
All of us are products of learning. That's right. We've been taught correctly That's right. or incorrectly. That's right. And it's the way we've been taught. And for some people, tithing, it's almost like the insurance policy. <laughs> I better get my tithing because yeah. God will get me. Yeah. And I'll be cursed if I don't. Yeah, and it's wrong. they're terrified, they're running in fear from a God who loves us. That's wrong. A God that gave his life on the cross. We need a good dose of TNT, truth, not tradition. Amen. That's TNT. Good. Because the traditions of men oh. cause the word of God to have no effect. No effect. That's and right. that just completely nullifies the word. And that's yet right. we've got so much tradition when it comes to finance teaching. That's right. And that's my concern, Roy. My concern is, when, that's why I brought up the tithing issue. Because I've heard so many people saying this, you're going to be cursed. God can't rebuke the devourer. God can't do this. God, God can't do that. And it does come over like legalism. Yeah. And so many people get tied up in it and it, it becomes it becomes a heavy load on them. That's right. And people need to understand that it's a relationship issue. That's and it has a I grace. Like it. See, I, I said one time when someone took objection, I said, you don't give out of need, you give out of relationship. Yes. Not need. In fact, you, you say don't give out of need, don't give even out of relationship, give out of seed. Mm -hmm. But seed has got to be based on relationship, love. That's right, because again, faith worketh by, by love. love. And my concern is we're not getting that right. You need to come back to the UK <laughs> and let's start teaching this stuff more oh, and yeah. more regular yeah. because we've got this out of balance message where people are getting taught to sow seed and you know what? I was watching, I, I just said to my wife the other day, I was watching a TV evangelist raising money for a, for a television program, and I said to my wife, have you heard Jesus been mentioned? Yeah. <laughs> there is no mention of the king and his kingdom. Yeah. There's no mention of love. There's yeah. no mention of grace given. There's no mention. Yeah. And it's all to do with the reward motivation, all to do with what you'll get back. It's, it's like, what's in it for me? That's right. That's, that's how it's that's become, right. Roy. That's right. It's a what's in it for me mentality. You know, Jesus mentioned the word church twice. Yeah. He mentioned the word kingdom over 100 Up. times. Absolutely. We've got it just backwards. That's good. Church, 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 kingdom. Yeah. You hardly have ever hear of So kingdom. what's the difference between kingdom and church, Roy? That is your baby. You can <laughs> talk to us about kingdom. Well, you know, John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus mm -hmm. said right after... Repent for the kingdom mm. of heaven is at hand. He sent out the 12, Matthew 10, message the kingdom. Mm -hmm. L Luke chapter 10, the 70, the message is the kingdom. Paul says the kingdom is not word only, it's word and demonstration, word and power. Mm. So it's the preaching of the word, but backed up with signs and wonders. And again, love is the whole essence of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come on earth as, as it is in heaven. So, you know, again, God doesn't need our tithes and offerings. He's got it all. <laughs> it's not that, you know, it's not that uh, he needs our money, but we need to give. Exactly. Because that breaks that, 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 that selfishness. Selfishness. Self-centeredness. And keeps our heart open to, to grace. Yes, to grace. Grace, grace, grace. grace you know, grace, I love grace. grace. G, God, are God's riches at, at Christ's, Christ's expense. expense. That's brilliant. Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. How much time do we have? We've got, still got a few minutes left, yet. We're right. still okay. <laughs> grace is received by faith. A grace is given freely by God. Number two, grace is received by faith. Grace, you don't deserve it. Oh. Grace, you cannot earn it. And grace, if you try to earn it, you'll never enjoy it. And that's why some people come to church look like they've been baptized in pickle juice. Because everything is an effort. Me, exactly. do, do. Not and it puts heavy loads on people. That's right. And that's why this distortion. We mentioned the other bit, Abraham. Notice Abraham. This is what, oh, this really annoys me. Notice Abraham didn't tithe and then get blessed. That's right. The scripture says Melchizedek blessed him. That's right. And then Abraham tithed. Right. This thing's been turned round about. That's right. You've got to be able to give in order to, for God to bless you. Yeah. And I believe, right. Terry, the time is gone, but I believe that tithing is part of our covenant relationship with the Lord. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's another, and it, another whole truth. Well, come, on, come on, we've still got a few minutes. Expand on that. What well, do you mean by that? When, when the Isra Israel, uh, Israelites would bring their tithe, they would make a covenant of thanksgiving and tell the Lord that this was their part of their covenant 
and humbly but boldly they would remind God of the covenant blessings he had made that they expected in response to their tithe. Mm -hmm. So I've sort of written out uh, for the conference tomorrow, mm -hmm. I've written out uh, an adaption of, of that uh, Deuteronomy 26 that we can read so we don't just drop our offering in the offering plate, we make our confession of faith and our, our confession of thanksgiving. So it's linked to a confession. That's right. The tithing, speaking, That's acting, right. doing. That's right. It's, like, it's, it's, it's whole linked to the whole behavior, That's isn't right. it? And That's it becomes so much part of us and the whole motivation of the whole thing's love. That's right. Rather than this legalism. That's the key. And it's all about... Do you know one of the things that really touched me as well in Malachi 3, when God was speaking to me about relationship in this whole scripture, return to me and I shall return to you. And yeah. God was saying to me, the Holy Spirit said to me, how can they rob me? How can you rob the living God? Right. And the Holy Spirit said to me, they're robbing me of blessing them. That's right. They're robbing me of that relationship. They're robbing me of that father-child relationship. Right. They're robbing me. That's Covenant. the subject in context. That's right. It wasn't just about money and giving your tithes right. and giving your sacrifices. It's all about relationship. It's all about grace. Yeah. And it's all about giving. And yet, today in the church, so many people are still missing it, Roy. That's right. They're still missing it. So you know, I was accused, Terry, in Stoke-on-Trent by some deceived people. I, they said that I was preaching that if you did not pay tithes, you would go to hell. Never. Can you believe that? Never. Talk about deception. Really? Yeah, that's what they said. If you didn't pay tithes, you would that's go to hell. That's what they said, I said, but God knows, never even entered my mind. No. No, that is, that is just to total... Love, 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 love. Love, 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 love and unity. Amen. Where the brothers dwell together in unity. Oh, that's another the word. The Lord another commands word. the blessing. He commands the blessing. Amen. In other words, he can't get there quick enough. That's, that's right. one of my favorite scriptures. And Deuteronomy 18, it'll overtake you. Overtake you. The blessings yeah. all. <laughs> you can't walk come. fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about love and unity. That's and right. if we, if the body of Christ can love each other... And if there could be unity amongst the brothers, just imagine when David, you know, some scholars believe that David uh, penned that, that Psalm 133 when all the tribes of Israel came together to crown him king. Because the northern, the southern kingdom was, was divided, but they came together to crown King David together. And he looked out from his balcony and he says, how good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in un unity. It commands a blessing. It goes on to say about precious oil pouring on the head Amen. of Aaron, dripping right down, all about the Holy Ghost, all over the body of Christ, all over us. That's why at Pentecost, when they came together, the Bible says they were in one accord. That Greek mm. word homothumidon means to have a complete harmonious agreement. And when there's complete harmonious agreement, the Holy Spirit can't get there quick enough. It's love mm. and it's unity together. We'll see mm. you next week on Finance and Focus. God bless. Welcome to Finance and Focus. This is part three of my dynamic interview with Dr. Roy Hawthorn. If you've missed part one and part two, Please, you need to get this DVD. We have covered so much in the area of finances. We've covered false prosperity teaching. We've covered tithing, giving. We've talked about legalism. We've talked about grace. But Dr. <laughs> Roy just finished off talking about love and unity on our last program. And this is so important because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3, if we don't give with love, it means nothing. Everything about us, should, motivation should be about love. Galatians 5 verse 6 says that faith worketh through love. Love and unity is from God and that's the pattern in heaven and that's the pattern we want to see here on earth. And Dr. Roy just finished by saying something about love and unity. Roy, you're looking young and younger. Thank you. Talk to me about love and unity because you just touched on something there just on the last program, we never got a chance to get in about this. So talk to me about love and unity. There is nothing more important in the Bible than love and unity. God is love. Amen. When he gives to us his nature, it is his nature of love. You mentioned 
in the last program, Psalm 133, how good mm. and pleasant, pleasant it is for brethren, and let's include sisters, yes. not to visit on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. but to dwell together. Mm. To dwell together. Yep. The word together is important. To dwell together in unity. Now, the outcome and the byproducts of that is, number one, anointing. Exactly. The oil. Absolutely. On leadership. Mm -hmm. Flows to the beard. <laughs> um, <laughs> a candidate. Down to the, the, the garment. Mm -hmm. Two, authority. The dew on the mountain. Mountains in the Bible are symbols of kingdoms. Yes. Daniel 2, Revelation 17. So now we talk about authority. The mm -hmm. byproduct of love. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about blessing. Commanded by God. You can't get away from it. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28. Blessings will come upon you and overtake, overtake you. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't get away. No matter how far or fast you run, if you're in unity and love, blessing is going to overtake you. Life forevermore. Prayer. If two, Matthew 18, 19. Mm -hmm. If two shall agree. The word there is symphonize. Wow. Now, you go to a, an orchestra, a classical oh. orchestra, and uh, they sound like a bunch of uh, uh, <laughs> scared cats. Mm -hmm. But finally, they are symphonized. Symphony, yeah. They are harmonized. Mm -hmm. So the conductor is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The baton is the Word of God. We are members of heaven's orchestra, and when the Holy Spirit sounds the baton, we live together in you. You've mentioned faith, the gifts of the Spirit, First Corinthians chapter 13. Giving, we said you can give without loving, you cannot love without giving. giving. Yeah. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 1. Mm -hmm. The success of the church, as goes the church, so goes Christ. So when the church is divided... Christ is divided. Mm. When the church is united, Christ is united. In, uh, in, 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 G in Genesis chapter 11, Satan's crowd was building the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. And God says nothing. They all, they all thought the same thoughts. They all spoke the same language. They all had the same common purpose. Yes. And Jesus said, I mean, God said in verse 6, nothing that they imagine shall be was, restrained. Exactly. Now, if that works for the, 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 the devil's crowd, yeah. how much more would it work for the Lord's crowd? Mm -hmm. And I said yesterday, anything that's born of love and unity, and that's the one prayer that Jesus prayed. Mm. What we call the, the Lord's Prayer is not the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> that's right. It's the disciples' prayer. Yeah. The Lord's Prayer is John 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in that prayer, he said, Father, I pray for the church that they be one as we are one. Mm -hmm. There's no conflict between the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. And Jesus prayed for the church that we should have so much love and unity that just as the relationship of love is between Father and Son, so the relationship of love is in the body of Christ and uh, we are missing it because anything, I mean, churches grow because they divide, you know, and they can't get along and so on. Anything that's not born of love and unity is a bastard. Mm -hmm. Now, religious folks out there, <laughs> that is a Bible word. Don't get your feelings hurt. It's a Bible word, but I say it again. Yeah. If it's not born of the Holy Spirit of love and unity, it's not born of God. Mm. And if it's not born of God, it's a bastard. But when it's born of unity in the Holy Spirit, that's why Paul says in Ephesians 4, 3, endeavor, that's effort. Mm -hmm. Effort. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are not quite as easy to love as others. <laughs> endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit, mm -hmm. of the bond of people. Love one another. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples in John 13. Verse 34, 35, a new commandment I give unto you. Love one another as I have. I missed that for a long time. So did I. I have loved you. Yeah. How did he love them? By washing. You see, if I serve you, Terry, mm -hmm. the way you want me to serve you, I'm serving you. Mm. But if I serve you the way I want to serve you, That's I'm good. not serving you. Mm -hmm. That's good. 
I've got to serve you.